Hello all, I welcome you all to the 23rd lecture of this course EE614. The last time we met, we, uh, we started our discussion on uh, MOSFETs and then we derived the current and uh, we saw some other aspects of velocity saturation and such. Today let's go on and discuss the, uh, the conduction below the threshold because the current that we calculated last time was after you invert the channel, right? Because we assumed or we calculated the current only for a drift component. So, but before we go there, I want to spend just a few minutes to very quickly recap uh, the MOS transistor because uh, this is something that I would like you to hold on at least uh, something to remember from this course. One is uh, a very short thing about a yeah, metal insulator semiconductor interfaces right where we saw that you have what is called as a surface potential which we defined in this particular fashion if we have a metal with a particular work function q psi m we have an insulator Right? and a semiconductor and we assume that uh, it's in flat band condition so the Fermi levels have uh, have matched and you have some uh, uh, intrinsic layer EI under this so basically the Fermi level is below the intrinsic level so we know that uh, this is a p-type semiconductor Right. And if we apply this potential, we apply a positive potential on top of this, we know that these guys have to bend. right? So what happens if you apply a positive potential, the holes are, uh, are pushed away. So you will have a reduced uh, hole concentration. And if you have a reduced hole concentration, the only way that can happen is that the, bend, the bands will start to bend down. So at the interface, you will it will change like this right the intrinsic level now will also bend and if you apply enough potential the intrinsic level will come here right lower than the uh, fermi level as we have drawn and the original separation the separation between the original intrinsic level and the intrinsic level after a positive potential has been applied such that you can have some electron concentration this is called as the psi s that is the surface uh, potential and at any point x be between the surface and the semiconductor you call it as psi p of x right and then we saw that if psi p of x is equal to twice psi b psi b is this separation then you reach what is called as the onset of strong inversion right and we calculated the uh, the carriers and we saw that the majority carriers this is as a function of x right majority carriers will be pp naught pp naught is na basically e power minus beta psi p of x so this tells you that uh, you uh, you have psi p of x going to zero at uh, at some distance from the surface so you will have the p equal to pp naught that is the equilibrium concentration and very close to the surface you have a reduced concentration because of the fact that you have inverted the channel right and the n of x turned out to be n p naught and e power beta psi p of x Right. So n of x is the uh, carrier, is the electron concentration and as fast as uh, the holes equilibrate to the equilibrium condition, the electrons will die to the equilibrium condition, np0, right, from the surface x. So these were the uh, relations that we derived for a metal insulator semiconductor junction. And the second important point that I want to take away from here, want you to take away from here is that we considered that this interface acts as if it has two capacitances 
one is the oxide capacitance and another one is the depletion capacitance right we get something of this sort right and this is what gave you the uh, the relation something of this sort right C total was a supplied gate bias and we know that as long as it is negative then you have a lot more accumulation and as and when you start to uh, go to uh, positive potentials you will first deplete it forming a depletion layer in the semiconductor and once you cross so let's say this is psi b and once you cross to psi b you reach a point where you strongly invert and when you strongly invert the capacitance gets back to this normal situation right so this is something that we saw and once you have two capacitances in series you can easily see that the actual voltage is now split between the two right so <clears throat> you have an oxide capacitance and the depletion capacitance sharing the voltage that you are applied right so now this we would like to carry forward or this understanding we like to carry forward when we actually discuss the MOSFET and when we discuss the MOSFET, MOSFET is the same thing but the only addition that you have is now is you have an additional drain uh, uh, terminal so this makes it an entirely a 3D structure so what we saw is when the drain is at zero we have uh, the band structure something of this sort right so close to the interface let's say this is the interface and this is the y direction and we draw this in the x direction this to be the y direction at the interface you have a reduction in the uh, uh, in the bias in the sense that in the reduction in the uh, the the semiconductor is inverted right? it is no longer as p as it was in the bulk and you have some electrons at the interface right and now when you apply uh, an additional drain potential we discuss this so what happens to the uh, the relation that we saw here the most important guy is the relationship of uh, the electron concentration at the channel with respect to the drain potential so we saw in our previous discussion that p as a function of x will turn out to be e power minus beta psi p which does not change and the electron concentration turns out to be e power n p naught e power beta psi p minus beta v d right this is this is something that we used in our derivation of the charge in this particular channel right so if we draw our MOSFET something like this uh, we have a source diffusion you have a drain diffusion right and on top of this we have a gate right we apply a potential and normally we we invert we have an inversion layer if the drain is not uh, biased and if we apply some drain potential this is going to change and it will change something of this particular sort right why because the drain potential induces something called psi i of x in the channel and it is this channel potential which will reduce the carrier concentration again if you ask the question why it's because of the fact that you have reverse biased this particular junction so this is the body junction this is the source junction so the body drain junction has been reversed by us so you have a depletion with here depending upon the drain potential right and you know that if you have a pn junction which is under bias the actual carrier concentration will depend upon inverse of uh, the potential that is applied right so but then now you have two potentials one is the forward gate potential e power beta psi p 
and the second one is the drain potential e power minus uh, beta vd right so it is this total combination will determines the carrier here so if we draw this as x y as we did before n p of x comma y will turn out to be n p naught e power beta psi p of y right remember psi p okay so this is not y here basically this is z y is here y is the thickness right the surface potential changes in the thickness so from the body to the surface it changes right so it, it is flat till you reach very close to the surface where it just bends down and that's what you see here minus beta vd is is mostly a function of x so it is this 2d combination of electrons which changes this uh, electron concentration both in x and in y and with this relation we calculated what was the uh, what was the charge and then the current right and when we calculated the current we came up with a relation for current which is w by l mu n c ox we saw this it is vg minus vfb minus 2 psi b minus vd by 2 into vd minus 2 by 3 root 2 epsilon s q n a by c ox vd plus 2 psi b so why do we have such two expressions two terms in this id it comes from that the fact that you had two terms in the charge qn so at any point x the electron density was qn of x right and qn of x is just an integral of all the charges in y right it's just integral qn of x comma y dy 0 to y1 it has to be this but then we thought that it, it need not have to be this we assumed a charge sheet model and we we, we got away of with this uh, y integral that is uh, integration over this thickness right so we just thought okay qn of x will be just some some number which is uh, which which very the, the charge in the channel varies only with x right so that, that was the charge sheet assumption that we spoke about before now we have these two terms because the total charge on the semiconductor contains two components the first component is the inversion charge component and the second component is from the charge in the depletion width because the total uh, potential applied on the gate changes both the inversion charge as well as the charge in the depletion region and it is this one is what we described previously using this model so basically whatever potential that you apply leads to some charge in the capacitor due to the inversion layer and you have some capacitance due to the depletion width and you remember we wrote that your total charge in the semiconductor in our derivation to be a summation of an electron component plus something in the body qb is a charge in the body which is because of the depletion width right if you can go back to the uh, previous lectures you will see that we use this particular expression to get this one and then we saw that if we draw id vd from this assuming that you have applied a gate bias such that you have inverted the channel right for all uh, gate biases such that the channel has been inverted you have some linear region right and then there is a small non-linear region and then the current starts to flatten out right. this was the linear region when you are having a very small vd and we saw that if the vd is smaller than vg minus vt then you have this term only the first term dominate and vd is not so strong in a value because it is small and hence it is only this vd which will dominate the entire current and hence you have a linear uh, region 
once again the second term will not largely contribute right and the region in which vdb slightly large is this nonlinear region where you have this vd square contributing to the total current and you have also this second term also um, involved right in the third region basically when vd is greater than this term when vd is greater than vg minus vt this second term is is actually vt right and if vg if vd is greater than uh, vg minus vt then you reach to a situation what is called as a pinch off right so we saw this when we take this uh, point if this slope reaches to zero at some point where q n of x at any point x is zero you reach a condition what is called as pinch off and when you have a pinch off that is you have this term to be zero or any voltage greater than vd will lead to a negative term here so your current starts to be negative which starts to be unphysical right so this equation just cannot be used when you uh, when you reach a potential vd which is greater than vg minus vt so what do people do or why so okay so first of all for the first thing to do to proceed in this particular fashion is to find when this thing will happen there are two ways to find it the first way to find it is we thought acha after this particular point the current is uh, current will not change because you have already pinched off this channel right why will the current not change after pinch off you have pinched off right so basically whatever charge which is being injected here right at this particular pin let's let's say that the let me draw this again So let us take our thing is here. The original thing, original length is L, and whatever it, wherever it got down is L dot, right? Whatever charge is there here, and you have a drift from source to drain, whatever is here, remember it is completely depleted, right? So whatever charge which is incident on this depletion width will be accelerated in this source body reverse junction, and it will reach the drain bias. this is very similar to your bjt where you have ic almost equal to ie right so basically whatever was injected into the base uh, when it reaches the base uh, collector depletion with it's is getting accelerated to reach directly here right so any increase in vd after the pinch off point will only move this pinch off point to a different place because you already go to a point where the charge in the channel is zero you cannot have a negative charge over this particular point right so as you increase the drain bias at the first point where the charge becomes zero it is this point right and as you increase the drain bias it will keep slowly moving towards the source so that l dash starts to become much smaller and smaller than l Right? and once you reach this point the current just remains the same because whatever is reached here is being accelerated by the depletion width to reach this point so there are two ways to find uh, this point where which is called as vd sat the vd sat is the point where you actually pinch off so basically two ways to find it the first way is you put did by dvd to be zero and you can find when you have did this equation you differentiate it with respect to vd and put to zero and that's what we used in our expressions the second way to find is you know the charge right and you put q when to be zero and then you find at what vd this happens this is the second way to find it we know the expression for q n right so we know that q n was written as vg minus vfb minus psi i of y minus 2 psi b this is not y this is x c ox minus 
this was the expression for sin. So if you put this qn to be 0, you will once again get the same expression for vd sat. vd sat will turn out to be the expression that we previously described. Minus vfb minus 2 psi b. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to write the entire expression. So this will be your VD set. So you can be, both of these guys will give you the same result and you can find whatever this, whatever that we, uh, we found here. So when we did this, we defined what is called as the threshold voltage VT, which was found to be V forward, the, sorry, not v, uh, flat band voltage plus 2 psi B plus root 2 epsilon S q n a to psi b by c ox so let's take a minute to understand this so vt is basically a representative voltage at the gate so what we mean is the gate voltage should now be equivalent to the 2 psi b is the uh, potential required to invert the channel and the flat band voltage this, this is to account for the metal semiconductor work function difference and this the second part here is to account for the charges in the depletion width, right? So because as we saw previously, you have two capacitances in series, one capacitance to to you to invert the channel, and the sec and the second capacitance of the depletion width that you have to have if you invert the channel, and the depletion width depends upon the channel potential as well, right? So basically, you get the channel potential here. And if you have such a channel potential at the surface, what will be the depletion width? And this is the depletion width the, uh, for that particular channel potential. And that depletion width divided by C ox will then give you the actual potential on the depletion, right? So this is a, an inverse way of understanding how the threshold voltage is actually defined, right? So now that we have covered this aspect, now let's go to what we were supposed to discuss today. And that is threshold and subthreshold conduction, right? So here, let's just take a look at uh, this threshold uh, equation in detail. So the flat band can be written as metal semiconductor work function difference minus fixed oxide or any oxide charges by the oxide capacitance plus two psi b plus root of four epsilon s q any psi b by c ox right so as we define as we discussed before mosfet is actually a, a four terminal device so you also have the base now what happens if the base or if the substrate is not uh, is not pulled to zero what happens if i apply some substrate bias such that the base i mean the substrate and the uh, that is we call it body the substrate and the source is not at the same potential when you have something like this let us think about it what happens let's go back to our same diagram this is body this is source and this is drain right and at any drain bias we saw that you will have this kind of a depletion width and that depends upon the drain to the body uh, potential difference right and this is p type so any positive potential to the body you will forward bias this p n junction right and what happens it will reduce this depletion width so when you reduce the depletion width basically it has to come here right so any positive body potential will reduce the uh, the width of the depletion and it will basically this will be the net threshold voltage if you apply a body potential now why would anybody apply a body potential that we will see later on but just right now because we are discussing the threshold voltage we just want to show that the very act of reducing uh, or applying a body potential will reduce 
the charge in the depletion width now why does it reduce the uh, threshold voltage threshold voltage is the voltage required to invert the channel as well as provide as many fixed charges here that is required for for that particular potential right now that we have actually forward biased this particular uh, junction we enforce a, a depletion width because the body is doped in a particular uh, with a known constant doping density the the net the the body drain or the body source potential defines the depletion width to be a particular value and hence any potential that is applied will directly modulate only the inversion charge and will not affect the drain uh, they will not affect the body depletion width right and hence a smaller gate potential is, is now enough to invert the channel because the gate is no more uh, inducing charges in the depletion width right so this is the physical meaning of why a positive body potential reduces the threshold voltage right so now with any given um, body potential how do you measure the sub threshold how do you measure the threshold voltage to measure threshold voltage what we do is we bias the device at some drain which is much smaller than vg and plot this vg versus id and what happens the current is zero almost for very small uh, for, for for some uh, gate voltages you are not even inverting and once you invert you have some sort of a linear race up to some level right and the extension of this line to the uh, x axis is basically vg this point is actually vt that's right okay so this point is basically vt plus half vd right the the intersection point of this particular line to the x axis will give you vt plus half vd if vd is very small obviously it will turn out to the fact that uh, that particular intercept is actually vt right now below this threshold voltage point the current seems to be almost zero but it is never zero right to actually plot this current we have to plot it to in log of phi versus vg and it will have this particular characteristic this is zero voltage and it will have some sort of a linear relationship and the because this is logarithm right let us take let us say this is 10 folds okay i mean 10 times the increase this is a decade right a decade increase in the current the potential required to actually have a decade increase in current is called a sub, sub threshold slope so this is yes so yes is sub threshold because we are talking about current which is sub threshold is called sub threshold slope it is defined as yes is del vg by a decade change in i id right so how do we calculate this to calculate this we need an expression for i and we cannot use the previous derivations because in the previous derivation we have talked about a drift uh, currents which is true only if you have a very high carrier concentration but now you do not have such high carrier concentration because the, cha uh, uh, the channel is not yet inverted right so under such conditions you anyway have id the current which is caused mostly by diffusion right now why does why do you have more diffusion than drift drift is obviously low because you have low carrier concentration you have diffusion because the any drain potential that you apply will now cause a gradient in the uh, the carrier density right because the gate will give you some some carrier concentration and the drain because the source drain sorry the body drain junction is reversed by us it will have a carrier concentration gradient which is given by the drain bias so id will be given by minus wq dn dn dash of x by dx 
and n dash is basically the uh, let us take the same diagram again right so n dash is okay so let me let me draw the the depletion width right n dash is the actual uh, carrier concentration from the source so basically this is the surface right from surface to the point where this is let's say surface to all the region here n dash at any point x is an integral over y n dash of x comma y right so it is the uh, integral of or electron concentrations in the y direction this is why from the substrate bulk to the surface right so how do we how do we calculate this let us take at source n dash at x is equal to 0 is the source can be calculated as integral 0 to some y n of y dy which i can write as uh, n p naught psi s zero is surface right psi s and of course the potential the um, uh, psi p goes to zero in the bulk at some point and n is written as e power beta psi p d psi p and this is at the source so basically the drain potential does not come into picture here and it has to be dx right so basically it is d psi p by dx which will give you our previous dy which will give us our previous relationship and this we have seen before this is the electric field in the y direction and hence this will can be written as 1 by beta root of epsilon s by 2 q psi s n a n p naught e power beta psi s the same thing can be written um, in the drain side n dash of l which is at the drain will give you 1 by beta root of epsilon s by 2 q psi s n a n p naught e power beta psi s minus beta v t now we have both uh, the carrier concentration at the source and the drain we can kind of write the uh, uh, the diffusion current here right so id is now written as wq dn instead of writing a uh, dn by dx i am going to write assume that the length is a small length and n dash of s minus n dash of drain by capital L. now once this is written you will have the entire expression for uh, the drain current which is w by l mu n beta square root q epsilon s n a by 2 psi s n i square by n a square so basically n i square by n a square is uh, n p naught square right because you have two of them here e power beta psi s 1 minus e power minus b beta v, beta v d so this is the total uh, drain current below sub threshold or, or, or at sub threshold right and if we have v d which is much greater than k t by q or which is much greater than 1 by beta or something of the order of vd is uh, greater than 3 kt by q 
this is a typical right so basically which means that we are saying that the vd is uh, somewhere around uh, um, 100 millivolts so we typically go more than this when you have 5 volt drain potential you always have something more than this right so under such situations id will turn out to be w by n w l mu and beta square root of q epsilon s n a by 2 psi s n i by n a e power beta psi s so basically you have an expression which is independent of of vd and how do we know how effectively we turn it off so basically we have to find if we are we, are, we okay we started all these things to find subthreshold slope and we define subthreshold slope as s is uh, delta v by um, uh, dk of id so basically what we are going to do is we are going to find dvg by did did is basically a function of psi s so which i'm going to write a dvd by d psi s so if i do this vg is v f b plus 2 psi b plus root 2 epsilon s psi s q n a by c x now 2 psi b is basically psi s so d v g by d psi s is 1 plus 1 by c ox into root of epsilon s q n a by 2 psi s which is basically 1 plus c d by c ox c d is a depletion capacitance c ox is the oxide capacitance right so basically yes is log 10 dvg by d ln id which will be log 10 dvg by d psi s by beta and this we know that uh, is 60 millivolt per decade and this we calculated as 1 plus cd by c ox right so the actual subthreshold slope is uh, is a product of 60 millivolt per decade into 1 plus cd plus c ox at room temperature right so this is the subthreshold slope for any mos transistor so if you have the depletion with much smaller than depletion capacitance much smaller than uh, the oxide capacitance then you have something which is very close to the ideal subthreshold slope now as the depletion capacitance becomes larger then you have the uh, subthreshold to start to degrade and how do you make depletion capacitance larger depletion capacitance becomes larger if you have uh, uh, if you have the the substrate to be very mildly doped right so if you have uh, NA to be a very small number then the depletion width will automatically increase right for any applied uh, drain bias you will have much larger depletion width in the body this will give you a larger depletion capacitance in, with, with, in comparison to the oxide capacitance and you will have a very poor subthreshold slope the second way to actually improve subthreshold slope is to have a very thin oxide right so let's yeah so let's do this the conditions for subthreshold slope so basically minimum subthreshold slope at 300 kelvin turns out to be 60 millivolt per decade under normal uh, device cons considerations right the normal oxide you do not have any special features like negative capacitance and such so you have something like this second you can degrade 
yes if cd is increased if na is reduced both of them will give you right and three you will have a sharp slope if a you have um, a smaller oxide thickness and two if you have a substrate bias right so we saw that previously if you apply a body bias you can actually reduce the depletion capacitance you can reduce the depletion or uh, you can you can okay you can apply you, you can apply an appropriate body bias and increase the depletion width and when you increase the depletion width you reduce the depletion capacitance so when you reduce the depletion capacitance you can actually make uh, the subthreshold slope uh, sharper or weaker by applying a particular uh, or by applying an appropriate body bias right so the last part here is if we have interface steps obviously it will add to this so subthreshold slope with interface taps is log 10 by beta 1 plus cd plus cit by cox right so this will be the total uh, capacitance with interface steps so to improve subthreshold slope obviously so you can see that the interface steps add to the depletion capacitance hence hence to actually reduce subthreshold slope you have to reduce the interface steps as well so the final aspect of uh, discussion with this uh, subthreshold conduction is the effect of temperature What does temperature do to the subthreshold conduction or generally to the MOSFET, right? So we know that mobility mu goes as t power minus 2. We saw this in several places. So typically mobility goes as t power minus 2 in the sense that as you reduce temperature, mobility increases, right? And hence ID, which is written as W by L mu n C ox. Vg minus Vfb blah, blah 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 will increase with reducing temperature. Similarly, the transconductance Gm, which is written as dou Id by dou Vg, is W by ML. M we defined previously. M is one plus in the ideal case it is one, but when you use different oxides, it can be degraded or improved mu n c ox vg minus vt and even even the uh, transconductance and current both of them uh, increases with increasing mobility and which can be obtained by reducing the temperature right so now what happens to the threshold we saw that vt is psi ms minus qf by c ox plus 2 psi b dt is basically d psi b by dt so that is d psi b is something the uh, this is the difference in the uh, separation between the fermi level and the intrinsic level of the p-type semiconductor right and we know that that will change with temperature right so basically that determines how many holes are there in the p-type semiconductor that will change with temperature obviously other things the metal semiconductor we don't think that changes a lot metal work function we don't think it changes because you see this psi ms is uh, electron affinity minus work function right so that does not change as a material parameter cx root of epsilon s q n a by psi b and 
psi b is basically kt by q ln n a by n i square this is something that we saw previously and n i square basically goes as t cube e power minus e g naught by k t right and if i incorporate all these into this psi b by dt will turn out to be 1 by t psi b minus e g by 2 q with all these things what happens when you uh, reduce the temperature is if i plot log id minus vg let's say if this is at 300 kelvin something that we know we see that the slope improves with reducing temperature when we when we incorporate all these things so basically this is let's say at 77 kelvin so if t is brought to 77 kelvin 77 kelvin is that of liquid nitrogen which is uh, technologically important right so the sub threshold slope which is 80 millivolt typical per decade at 300 turns to 22 millivolt per decade at 77 kelvin so the sub threshold as an uh, as a tremendous uh, improvement second the threshold voltage vt which is about 0.25 volts at 296 kelvin turn, uh, turns out to be 0.5 volts at 77 kelvin higher threshold is always uh, much appreciated because now you have much lower leakage currents right so basically lowering the temperature is always good for most uh, logic and amplifier applications because it leads to low power uh, operations but then you always have the problem of cooling the device you need a cryostat and all those things now there is one final aspect that we will deal before we go into non-linear or short channel effects in a MOS transistor is what happens so till now we have assumed that the body is uniformly doped finally we'll just very quickly we won't go into details but we'll see very quickly what happens if you have non-uniform doping in the body there are typically two non-uniform so basically this is done in most mosfets so and hence that's what we are doing there are typically two approaches to this so we are talking about the doping density from the surface is they are either doped in this particular fashion or they are doped in this particular fashion right so either let's say this is the surface right if the surface is doped very low and then you have a little higher dope in the body or you have some very low doping in the body and then increment close to the surface but then at the surface there is always a small reduction in the doping density why so here you see you have a lower doping density at the surface right so one is so this is called as a high low profile And this is called as a low high profile. Both of them are used depending upon the application. Typically you have, we'll just discuss what are the positives and negatives of each one of them and drop it at that. Okay. So you have lower doping at the surface typically because you want to improve mobility. At the surface. What happens if you have ionized donors, the ionized donors will scatter. We saw previously that you have scattering by phonons and scattering by ionized impurities, right? So basically, typically you want as low density of ionized ions at the surface and hence you always want to reduce the dopant density at the surface to improve mobility. That's one thing. The second thing is that it also reduces it also reduces transverse field 
Why? Because any of the ionized densities you have here will lead to some charge densities at the surface or close to the surface. So you have some depletion width here, right? And this or enhanced depletion width here. So basically what it does is this will lead to an additional. So basically this is why. So this will lead to an additional electric field EY that is the transverse electric field in addition to the uh, longitudinal electric field that is typically applied between source and drain. So an addition, so lower doping density will lead to uh, will lead to I mean lower doping density here will lead to lower transverse fields and then also a lower threshold voltage. So now the, the third point is what happens when you have lower doping in the deeper regions. So lower doping in the body, deeper regions of the body will increase the depletion capacitance, sorry will increase the depletion width, right, increases WD and hence reduces the depletion capacitance improves uh, subthreshold swing right but then it also leads to source drain punch through in smaller channels right so if you have much lower doping in the uh, in the bulk of the semiconductor the depletion width will extend even closer to the source leading to what is called the source drain punch through right this can be avoided when you have a very high doping density in the um, in the bulk of the body so if you have in the bulk of the body high doping density it will not have any uh, it will not have a source drain punch through effects but then high doping density in the body has other effects for high doping in the body leads to reduced source drain substrate depletion higher CD and hence uh, poorer subthreshold C right. but then a lot of things uh, for instance uh, things become very complicated to actually uh, derive these things analytically because let us say vt is v forward bias plus 2 psi b plus the total charge in the body by c ox right and total charge in the body is basically this is q integral 0 to depletion with the doping density ionized doping density of x dx now this is also a function of uh, uh, the psi of s right and this so basically all these things uh, in turn has to be solved self consistently to actually find out what is the effect of uh, threshold what is the effect of dopant density on the threshold uh, we won't go into these details in this course so we stop here regarding the uh, the discussion on sub threshold current conduction the next time we meet we will talk about short channel effects thank you